Today, I want to go over some astronomy basics. Why? Well, it's always good to review the fundamentals. And astronomy has a little bit of jargon in it. And sometimes that jargon can get very dense. And, and then when you start reading astronomy articles or watching astronomy YouTube videos, it, it, it's, it can get overwhelming. And it's very, very easy to get lost. So I think it's, it's time for some refreshers. It's time for some basics uh, to, to help us navigate, though, the world of astronomy. And the world of astronomy starts with the sky. In astronomy, we have something we call the celestial sphere, which imagine you're sitting inside of a giant like beach ball or a giant sphere, uh, and you're looking around it. And so you can look at different directions in the sky and you'll see different things. Uh, the, the direction that is directly above your head at that moment, at that time, on that night is called the zenith or zenith. And the, the point directly below you is called the nadir. And then uh, what else do we have on the night sky? Uh, oh, over the course of a night, you'll notice that the stars move. This is, of course, due to the rotation of the Earth. But back when astronomy was just getting started, we didn't know that the Earth was rotating. So it appeared like the, star, the whole sky was rotating. It looks like the sky is rotating around a fixed point. If you happen to live in the northern hemisphere, there is a star near this fixed point about which all the other stars appear to rotate. We call this the North Celestial Pole, and the star there is Polaris, handy. In the southern hemisphere, there's no star nearby, but there is a cross that kind of sort of points in that direction, but that's the best you're going to get. Polaris uh, it sits directly above the Earth's North Pole. So if you were to stand on the North Pole of the Earth, of uh, the axis about which the Earth spins, and look directly overhead, Polaris would be at your zenith. It would be directly above you. As you go further south on the Earth, Polaris appears to be lower and lower and lower. And if you cross the horizon, then Polaris is under the ground. You can't see Polaris anymore. But then you can turn around and see the south celestial pole. There's another feature that's going to be very important on this celestial sphere called the celestial equator. So as you can see, the celestial sphere is like the surface of the Earth, but you know, bigger and we're on the inside of it. So we have the North Celestial Pole, the South Celestial Pole, and then there's a belt running around halfway between those two poles that we call the Celestial Equator. Just like the Earth's equator makes a belt between our North Pole and our South Pole. Now, to identify uh, coordinates on the sky, you know, like on the Earth, the surface of the Earth, we have latitude and longitude. We have a coordinate system like that for the night sky, uh, but we call this declination and right ascension. Declination is how far above or below that celestial equator you are. So if you're a star and you're right there at that belt, at that celestial equator, you have a declination of zero. And then as you go north from there, you get higher and higher. It's counted in degrees. So you can be like five degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, all the way up to Polaris, which Polaris itself is sitting at 90 degrees declination. And then for Southern Hemisphere objects or objects below that celestial equator, we have negative degrees, like negative 5, negative 10, negative 50, all the way down to the South Celestial Pole, which is sitting at negative 90 degrees. So by knowing the declination, you know how far above or below the celestial equator that object is. Now, the, the, that's the uppy-downy motion. Uh, the lefty-righty coordinate is going to be totally arbitrary. Just like longitude on the Earth is totally arbitrary, you need, you need to pick somewhere to be zero longitude and then measure all longitude off of that. In modern times, we've settled on zero longitude being the Greenwich Observatory in England. That is the, uh, the line of longitude that marks zero degrees, and then we measure everything off of that. It could have been anywhere. It could have been anywhere, but because of history, it ended up in Greenwich, England. Uh, for the night sky, that zero longitude, like where are we going to start counting? 
is going to be where the sun crosses the celestial equator at the spring equinox. Why? Well, one, we had to pick something, and two, the Greeks did it, and, you know, Western and modern astronomy are based on the Greek and European tradition, so there it is. But there's a problem. Oh, and so that's zero. That's zero right ascension. And then everything off of that is measured in degrees, or sorry, it's measured in hours, minutes, and seconds. So you start here at zero um, right ascension, and you start making a circle like you can imagine the hands of a big 24-hour clock. So that giant circle going around the sky is measured, is, is cut up into 24 hours, and the hours are divided into minutes, and the minutes are divided into seconds. Why? Because reasons. There is an issue here with right ascension, and, count, and depending on the spring equinox, the spring equinox changes. Where the sun rises, where the sun crosses that celestial equator changes every year because the Earth itself, our orbit, or sorry, our spin, our rotation, we're wobbling a little bit. Our North Pole doesn't always point to the star Polaris. Over the course of thousands of years, it makes this tiny little circle in the sky. And so this changes where astronomical objects are uh, according to our particular calendar days. So to account for this, in, an, in addition to the right ascension, you basically have to say what year it is. Or, and in astronomy terms, this is called an epoch. Again, for reasons, this is all just jargon. So to, so to give a full accounting of exactly where a star or a comet or a planet is on the night sky, you have to give its declination, you have to give its right ascension, and you have to give the epoch or year. And that will help pin down exactly where that star is. And, and it's these coordinates that astronomers continue to use today. There are a few other things on the night sky, like there are constellations, there are cool, pretty patterns. And again, because modern astronomy is based on the Western tradition. We have a lot of Greek constellations, a lot of Arabic names for stars, a lot of European explorers. So, so the, uh, every culture has constellations. Uh, about 100 years ago, the International Astronomical Union settled on 88 constellations that cover the sky. But you can make up any constellation you want. Really, no one owns that. Uh, but, but astronomers use constellations. They don't use constellations like for anything other than dividing the sky like okay this is in this is in capricorn over here and this is in sagittarius over here so we know what chunk of the sky a particular object is in uh, there is a special set of constellations on the sky where uh, all the planets in the sun and the uh, moon appear to move through uh, now we know that this is the plane of the solar system, uh, but again, back then, um, we didn't know. We just saw the planets like following particular paths. We saw the sun follow a particular path in the sky. And so all these very important things like planets and suns and moons are moving through a distinct set of constellations. We call that the zodiac. There are actually other constellations that the sun moves through but didn't include get included in the zodiac because reasons people care a lot about the zodiac because of um you know horoscopes and predicting your future which was a huge deal back then back in the day hundreds of years ago uh, is not so much a huge deal now um and in fact your sign if you know your your sign like what month you were born in or whatever uh it's actually wrong actually because of that precession of the of the earth of our axis it's been a enough centuries by now uh that your sign that the constellation that you think you were born under is actually one over just just thought you would know uh no it has no connection uh what where the sun is where the planets are in in the sky has absolutely no connection to your everyday life because stuff in space is really really far away and we understand the forces of nature and like it's you can see them and they're pretty which affects your life i guess like if you're gonna go out on a, on a nice 
beautiful evening and stargaze and look at the plants that that can change your life but not in any real like direct way so that's the night sky uh we're gonna keep going with this astro 101 series coming up next we're going to look at the solar system so tune in then uh, don't forget to go to patreon.com slash pm sutter to help support this show and like share and subscribe and i'll see you next week